Hello and welcome to theCUBE here in Seattle at the headquarters for Amazon Web Services. This is the reInvent building. We're right above the spheres uh, outside. I'm here with Swami. He could a preview of reInvent. Swami, great to see you. you. Here in the your home turf, it's an away <laughs> game for me. Um, great to be here in the studio at AWS. Good to see you. Hey, great to be here. Uh, thanks for coming yeah. over. Yeah, you're looking like you've got a spring in your step. You're smiling. Reinvent's coming up. You're excited for uh, your keynote every year, you had a great keynote. Always, always, always a great watch. Hey, thank you, thank you. A lot, uh, lots expected uh, to come, and I'm actually literally just walking from a reInvent keynote uh, table read uh, right now. So, uh, very, very excited. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I know you won't spill the beans, and I won't even ask questions because uh, uh, it's under heavy embargo. But one thing I do want to talk about is. The AI wave, obviously you've been on theCUBE, I mean, for, since the Cube started, um, and you've done all the work around databases. You, you were part of yeah. that machine learning team that built out the core pre-gen AI, so you saw it before. In fact, we yeah. were, we've talked many times around the role of data and how AI yeah. could, could work, and then now generative AI, which is yeah. is a kind of new, new category, is generating, yeah. so it's not yeah. like a static thing. Yeah. There's a lot more action around it, and of course, the hottest thing on the planet is agentic systems, <laughs> or yeah. agents, um, and so this is where it, the data becomes super valuable, and this yeah. is your wheelhouse, and I know you've got a great vision on it, so what is your vision for the state of the art of as the infrastructure gets, you know, levels up to the kind yeah. of performance we're seeing that democratizes it, the data layers are going to be harmonized, all kinds of new semantics, the, all kinds of stuff is happening at the data layer that will enable yeah. this agent, multiple agents, you got AI distributed infrastructure, you got routing challenges, I mean, there's a lot of technology involved to make it all work. What's your vision? Yeah, no, actually, uh, if you look at what's happening in the generative AI, it's kind of, we are having this moment because a lot of things came together uh, to build up to this moment. Uh, if you see, um, it's like um, deep learning neural net papers uh, happened like 30 years ago, but then uh, it required deep amount of computational uh, capability. And then uh, it needed huge amount of elasticity. But then transformers came along and that architecture and that unlocked the ability to learn in an unsupervised manner. But then cloud and the specialized accelerator compute with things like GPUs and Trainium and whatnot, and uh, the ability to have seamlessly infinite storage suddenly unlocked this whole new wave of um, large language models uh, that now can learn from huge amount of data. That led to the moment where we are in, in the industry. But if you look at what's happening in um, right now, 2023, I would probably call it as like the year where people were doing a lot of proof of concepts. 2024 is where you are now seeing people are suddenly saying, okay, yes. now I got to figure out which ones are actual real ROI and which ones, are, how do I actually convert it into yeah. real use cases that benefit to my customer? And how do I deploy these Gen AI systems and agents that actually saves money mm -hmm. or increases <laughs> revenue. Yeah. So I'll give an example of my favorite agent uh, that we use within Amazon. So I use uh, Q, uh, the developer one, uh, even now when I write code and whatnot. But, uh, but the part, while everybody gets excited about uh, Gen AI agents uh, yeah. in terms of coding and so forth, the actual business value that was like disproportionately important when it comes to Q was actually its agent for doing code transformation software upgrades. Within Amazon, one of the things we did was uh, actually ask Q, the agent, to say, take this Java package, upgrade from JDK 8 to JDK 17. Yeah. And what it did is it inspected uh, yeah. all the right uh, packages and the dependencies and said, you know what, to do this, here are the uh, changes you need to yeah. make and ship a code review and yeah. then uh, do it. Uh, and almost like more than up to 90% yeah. of these uh, code reviews were just accepted by yeah. our developers. And this year, up till now, we have saved at least up to 4,500 developer years. People always think it's ours. Uh, uh, actually, it is years. Like yeah. that is a huge <laughs> amount of savings, let yeah. alone like uh, more than $250 million worth of CapEx savings. But that is just one example of what an agent can do in a real world yeah. setting. 
But uh, this is where, again, Q is uh, built on top of Bedrock and uh, all the agentic capabilities we offer. I actually think the world we are about to get into, if we map the business problem yeah. to actually your data and actually build mm -hmm. with the best in class LLMs that are available, suddenly the efficiency of um, productivity is going to be like yeah. the 10x, and that is what we are very excited. Yeah. That's why you yeah. already see yeah. hundreds of thousands of customers are already yeah. leveraging machine learning in a big way on AWS across our I mean, Productivity is the killer app here, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Productivity, I was talking to a developer and I said, hey, what's the impact of some of the agentic stuff? Well, we got low hanging fruit we're doing now, use cases that we can clearly see, yeah. whether it's automating JIRA tickets or doing code yeah. transformations, as you mentioned. I said, okay, that, what's, what's the value of that? Is it bottom? No, it's more beer time. Yeah. And, <laughs> this is a direct quote. <laughs> more time to drink beer with my friends. Um, uh, and that was like, remember the old days, I don't have to get paged, and then you had that kind of yeah. innovation, so that was the beginning of automation. So now more beer time means more time to do other things. Right. And uh, the other th the fallacy that's out there I want to get your reaction to is that you know AI will replace the developer. Well, developers love to code. They don't like to debug <laughs> or, or do all that's the, right. you know, that all the, Leg yeah. work, that's right. code transformation, that's like a slog. I mean, yeah. who wants to do that? Like, okay, but if you know it can be done, again, this is where you start getting yeah. into every process. Yeah. Every single process and yeah. every single workflow has an opportunity, whether it's code refresh or my marketing plan yeah. or um, manufacturing. The digital twin concept is moving into what ag agents will do on yeah. their behalf on any problem. Yeah. Actually, uh, you're touching on an important one. Just take the software one and then I'll talk about what it means for healthcare and others. What we did with Q is like, well, there is a lot of excitement around like uh, code uh, generation. As you said, developers really like writing code. That's not, <laughs> they will take the help and Q is the best at it. And if you go see SW Bench, you're always in the top one or two all the yeah. time. But the part actually what we took with approach is to help them also uh, save time doing the drudgery associated with <laughs> like uh, doing like security scans or software yeah. upgrades or various other things. Uh, in the same way, now one of the big areas we are seeing uh, in terms of our customer adoption is also leveraging Gen AI to do things that are right now very, very manual and boring. Um, yeah. Like um, for instance, uh, Right now, if you see in the healthcare industry, like Pfizer, uh, they came and talked about uh, yeah. how they are able to leverage Gen AI to automate huge amount of processes mm -hmm. and even realize up to like 750 million to a billion dollar savings across their whole value chain of the yeah. processes. But it requires essentially mapping bunch of work that they are currently doing and then being able to apply uh, I mean, bring in data and AI together and uh, do this, and this is what they are actually building on top yeah. of uh, our Gen AI stack with like Bedrock and others. They talked about it even last year. But uh, Toyota is another example. Yeah. Um, they actually leveraged, uh, in this case, like Q Business, and they threw in all their operational run books yeah. and various other things so that developers spend less time actually yeah. figuring out uh, what is the best way to yeah. actually handle certain scenario. And uh, uh, again, uh, the when you have access to data at your fingertips, like yeah. uh, it just changes the game. Like Prarit Garg, uh, president of Smartsheet, said they deployed Q without writing a single line of code, and it is they built an Ask Me bot in Slack, and the 3,000 yeah. employees can now in Slack ask any questions yeah. and get response back. You know, you know, I was talking with one of your leaders yesterday here at AWS and she was talking about, we go to the end customer, so you have a customer, like say Delta Airlines for instance, their customer is the, yeah. is the people who fly and use the service and then work backwards, this is the classic working backwards document. So you're, you're touching on something I want to get into because at the end of the day you have customers and customers of yeah. the customer uh, and the end user customer. What you're getting at here, and what, what I love about the cloud, well, I'll say 1.0, I know you guys don't like that term, but the, the beginning of the greatness of Amazon was it changed the labor equation. Yeah. Right? The labor was the developer, I don't have to provision a data center yeah. or get a box, I put my credit yeah. card down, I start a company called Airbnb or whatever, and it's, next thing you know, it, yeah. it scales and yeah. it accelerates, scales and becomes a rocket ship. Yeah. Okay, that's the progression of cloud one. Cloud two is a different animal in the sense that you now have a different labor 
shift. You're getting at the business people. So, you know, inside the end yeah. user customer, like a Delta, they have developers yeah. and they use Amazon, right? So, so you have developers will always have that relationship to the yeah. business. Yeah. But now the 10X engineer, which came out of cloud, famously yeah. quoted, is now the 10X or more business professional. Yeah. I mean, I, I hear stories of people using um, the, the Q and other tools to write queries, SQL yeah. queries. They say, this is what I want to get out of the data. Write me a SQL query and actually yeah. do the SQL query directly. Yeah. So this is like unprecedented. Like right. who would do that? Like that, no one would ever sit down and learn yeah. SQL if you're yeah. in, on the business side. So the labor on the business side is, 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 so I want to get your reaction to that. And two, I want you to talk about the domain expertise value of that individual. Yeah. That's the new IP is what's in the head of the human. So yeah. the labor shift to productivity to the yeah. business do you see like a 10x step function? Actually, that's a great uh, one to dive into. If you see, you rightly framed it that uh, cloud has changed the equation and made developers like 10x productive that they don't have to do the undifferentiated yeah. heavy lifting. Now, if you see what is happening with the Gen AI world, uh, the business users are now actually can be like 10x productive. I actually had one of the companies uh, which does transportation planning. They built on top of Bedrock uh, a Gen AI assistant uh, that, I, that can tell why is this exit uh, connecting to I-5 crowded at this time? And they can, the transportation planner can ask that question. Yeah. And it will say it is because uh, there is an uh, um, an event happening, uh, yeah. like a construction happening, based on, and it answers it based on the real time streaming data flows yeah. uh, uh, into the cloud and it maps <laughs> it and generates. And then you can ask a subsequent question saying, like, how do I actually make this more efficient? Yeah. And it says, uh, based on actually the past uh, projects that we have seen here, is the way to do this better and schedule yeah. it at this time. So this kind of workflow usually used to take like weeks to do this. Now it can be done in a matter of minutes. Yeah. And uh, yeah. to me, these are just the beginning of how the world yeah. is about to change. Uh, yeah. That's what makes this so yeah. exciting. I mean, I, I'm, I think I, I'm more excited about this history in, in all history, this inflection point, because it, it takes all the other ways, almost puts them all together. Yeah. And you bring up a good point, the role of data is super valuable. That example of, of the construction and the, the freeways, it could be applied to anything. Supply chain, my marketing program, That's audience right. consumption of say the Cube videos. Every, everything has data. And, and what you're getting at here, and this is the focus of this agentic system is, for the first time in history, the ability yeah. to put data sets together faster that's right. And harmonize and or integrate yeah. is here. And it reminds me of the old days of when APIs came out. Oh yeah, people think, oh wow, APIs are great. I just connect two yeah. systems, I got a REST yeah. API, and then now I'm connected. Yeah. And Gentic is like, well, I can just connect to that, and now I have instant value. Yeah. So it used to be hard, and you you know, you, you've done this work. Yeah. So t talk through the role of data, because it's not just about the LLM, it's the small language model, secure language, it's a sovereign language yeah. model. So you have data now is, I won't say fragmented, but just categorically everywhere and yeah. different. So the integration and yeah. the, in, the fusion of the data. I talk, think, talk about your vision on this, because I think this is a key piece. So one of the key things um, that we, for us to realize the power of Gen AI is that we need to bring in, uh, so far all the LLM excitement has been all things around like uh, structure, uh, unstructured data, purely text yeah. and maybe images and so forth. But one of the big things uh, we actually see, especially for enterprises and uh, next generation yeah. uh, applications to do is to reason about like data sitting in relational databases and data yeah. warehouses or actually other kinds of yeah. data. So I actually, this is where Q and QuickSight is a good example that now you yeah. can actually build a PowerPoint presentation like data stories by just asking a question saying yeah. like, hey, show me the value of how good is my free trial program. And it actually yeah. generates like an entire <laughs> slide deck based yeah. on it. Uh, that used to take like a week. Now the, a different kind of data, I, a favorite customer of mine, Brainbox AI, they actually had a uh, building efficiency uh, assistant called Aria, I think. Uh, and y using that assistant, they are able to query the entire building schematics and energy yeah. consumption, and then are saying like, why is there increased consumption for 
in this floor yeah. and uh, what is the reason behind it you can dive deep yeah. and then it says it's because this has not been serviced this much so here is the way to fix it and now you can actually run this in a much more efficient way using these kind of technologies yeah. so the ability to get insights on what used to take yeah. from months to minutes is going to be a game scope, changer. Scope, scope that uh, alternative, that the old way and new way, because that, uh, that's the way I like to think about this wave yeah. we're in. What, in. In the old way, what would it take? Just kind of yeah. lay out like the concept of what the steps would be to like merge data together. I go to the data warehouse, I yeah. export the data, I build a connector. Take us through the old way and then the new way. Yeah, actually, so let's talk through, like uh, uh, I was actually, uh, I built RDS, uh, yeah. our relational database service, <laughs> uh, along with Dynamo. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, so one of the questions. That's why I asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> so if I had to uh, think through what is the best uh, way to determine the optimal free tri uh, trial yeah. program for Dynamo, the way to actually do this is first figure out what is the actual typical usage pattern on uh, how long does a customer, once they sign yeah. up to when they actually run production use, you actually track this uh, event history, store it in a relational data warehouse, and then work with your data engineer to export this data first into the data warehouse, and then run like a bunch of queries, and then say you make a list on like uh, what is the percentage of customers who actually yeah. use it on day one to day two yeah. to day 30 to day 60, and then then you actually go through like a one month analysis uh, before it, you And you got to get the schema set up first. With the schema. And then you get the, that's, yeah. gotta, that's work. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so know? all this, so you need almost like a team of data engineers to BI engineers yeah. to product managers yeah. before you get to business station. Now, fast forward to the world that we are in with Q and Oh, that side. would take how much, how many days, it's weeks? It's probably like, uh, I, I've worked on this exact problem and it, it took us like close to three to four weeks to do this after schema and data virus. Okay, so yeah, so, even longer, <laughs> even a lot. Longer. This was 15 years ago, right? <laughs> okay. So now, with Q and QuickSight, uh, the ability to actually do this kind of analysis has just changed to a matter of like minutes. Now you can actually, now that you have this kind of uh, yeah. the ability to ingest data to with zero ETL to now being able to now actually have QuickSight query this data through Q and then build dashboards and mm -hmm. then get a graph on what is the conversion yeah. rate for each of this. It is like a game changer when you think about the speed of decision making. Yeah. That's why your point on labor shift on uh, across for business user and making them 10x productive is like uh, going to be a yeah. big deal. Yeah, and that's just, that's going to have that same step function change that uh, you guys did on the first wave, which was clearly developer labor and then enterprise labor for tech. That, yeah, you know now business you already have that that continues to go. It's not like it's going away. So yeah. you've got developer productivity is still going up. Now you got the business side, and then. Now you have the C-level executives mandating Gen AI, so you're starting to see a lot of activity around process analysis. So, you know, in the enterprise where it's super hot, and by the way, in, in, in the entrepreneurial circles right now in Silicon yeah. Valley and in New York, uh, where we're monitoring as closely is that most of these young entrepreneurs that are under the age of 30 with the, who are going after these go yeah. big or go home concepts are all doing enterprise stuff. Yeah. Because the end-to-end -end workload and the problem sets are in the enterprise. Yeah. So, the data opportunity, this, they're all going at yeah. the data or going kernel level yeah. system programming. So yeah. it's a system architecture and data. So the, the number one opportunity we're hearing is process. Yeah. And what's the data for the process and then what new data could be there. And most yeah. customers I talk to say, we never even thought about this before because it was too hard. Yeah. It was never even on the table yeah. to even think like, let's merge you know, location data or yeah. weather data, yeah. or like what's, yeah. available now, give me all the data you got. Yeah, actually that is uh, another thing you'll see more and more. As data, I mean cloud basically made the uh, data storage a lot more accessible. You don't have yeah. to actually then uh, pick and choose which data you store. But then just storing them alone is not enough. Uh, how do you actually make sense of it and uh, putting together <laughs> Uh, them to do like efficient analytics and then being able to do uh, machine learning on top of it. So it's uh, one of the key areas of focus and SageMaker has already yeah. uh, done a huge amount on this front and being able to bring together uh, all of it. That's why you are already have like uh, among, among the hundreds of thousands yeah. of customers using SageMaker, you already see 
like Intuit, for instance, is able to build a personalization yeah. platform uh, using it. <laughs> or Booking.com yeah. last year at Reen when they talked about how they were able to uh, build an amazing capability for travel assistant and so forth. But what is changing now is also the kind of data is not just about data sitting in a relational data warehouse or so forth. Multimodality of data is also now becoming more and more accessible because of these yeah. uh, large language models, uh, yeah. especially because yeah. they can generate embeddings. And the moment you're able to seamlessly combine these, it is now suddenly yeah. you can actually create remarkable, meaningful yeah. value. You know, Matt Garman said, and we've been saying on theCUBE all along that the killer app is productivity, but when I asked, we asked all the practitioners out there how they view Gen AI, and, and Matt actually mentioned it in my interview with them, um, Gen AI is just another application. Yeah, and so we've all been, we all know how applications work. You do AppSec yeah. review, you do all <laughs> kinds of stuff. The security concerns, yeah. <laughs> you you know yeah. that what that work is. So when you look at applications and what powered the old yeah. applications, and just to say Gen AI is a new application yeah. now, it's different, it's got all these benefits. Yeah. The word resilience has not yet been defined. So I want to ask you, and resilience is, is discussed a lot in in, in security, yeah. like yeah. ransomware. How do we roll back? It's yeah. recovery basically. Um, LLMs and small language models, as they work together, they got to be accurate, yeah. and they got to have uh, some sort of SLA. They yeah. can't be you can't be wrong on a finance yeah. app, or Q can't be wrong yeah. when it's coding. So quality is critical, but also data. Yeah. Sometimes you know someone might get data in. How yeah. do you roll that back? So, what does resilience mean to you? How do you view resilience when you talk about so, Gen AI? Because people want the resiliency, yeah. they want the security, they want to yeah. have confidence. Yeah. It's a great question. This is one of those uh, where we are investing serious amount of uh, innovation. Now, I'll just uh, start with first uh, that in this area, first you want to be able to build uh, these data-driven applications and you want them to be contextually grounded with the right data so that the answer that you generate, you actually have it. Like even in New York Summit, we launched like contextual grounding as an example. But I actually, um, thing you'll see us uh, doing more and more in the form of guardrails, uh, where you already see like guardrails first provide the first layer of uh, things where it is able to actually uh, save things like prompt injection attacks and various other things so that, uh, and it is more than 85% uh, accurate compared to the native methods provided by foundational yeah. models. But what is missing, and you'll see us doing more in this area, is uh, yeah. actually being able to map the data and the uh, uh, LLM responses and actually provide, continue to provide yeah. more and more contextual grounding in this way. And uh, we have some lot of interesting things uh, in yeah. the space uh, that you are working through. And you saw the beginnings of it yeah. in your summit, and you'll see more and more on this front. Well, I'm super excited to have this chat with you, and we'll, we'll certainly have my agent call your agent for a reInvent <laughs> interview. <laughs> uh, a lot, lot going on, it's a super exciting area, and yeah. you're leading the charge at AWS on the Gen AI and the whole AI yeah. mission. Okay. Uh, thanks for taking the time, appreciate oh, thanks it. Thanks again. Good to see you, always, always a pleasure. See you. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE here at the AWS headquarters. This is the building called reInvent. This is theCUBE coverage, thanks for watching.